Good morning, everyone. It's very nice to uh, to have you to join this uh, presentation. And uh, I think it's so early. So have a nice day. And this topic is an enable SRLB on a uh, Power MV mode on the Power 7 platform. So it's very uh, platform and the hardware specific. So I hope you can still enjoy this session after my presentation. Uh, this is the agenda of today. First, uh, I will show some basic concept of the I.O. architecture on the uh, Power 7 platform. And uh, I'll show you those platform will introduce some restrictions to enable the SRV and our solution on that. The at last, uh, it's the future world. First is the concept of Positionable endpoint. A positionable endpoint, PE, is a separately assignable I/O unit. It could be a single or multiple function of I/O adapter, or multiple I/Os. I/OH possibly including upstream switch and uh, bridge. Uh, the PE concept is defined in the power architecture platform requirement. It's called PA, PATR. And uh, you could download that on power.org. So PE concept is very important uh, in, on the Power 7 platform because when we want to, for example, in a SRV uh, environment, we want to give the such function to the guest. The purpose of this, uh, we need to put this such function into the PE concept so we can assign this uh, such function to the guest. So that's the uh, requirement to, uh, to pass through this VF to the guest. This is uh, an example about uh, how uh, the PE could look, uh, look like. Mm -hmm. This is a, a general architecture at, at a big uh, CPU attached to a PCI host bridge. And it could introduce some PCI bridge and attach some PCI I/O adapter. The first is uh, kind of P is bus P, which will include uh, uh, many uh, P PCI devices. So we can group a lot of PCI devices into this only one PE. And another kind of is called the device PE. So we just put uh, one individual function into to this PE. Uh, it depends on uh, what kind of requirement you have. So on the power platform, uh, in order to in order to uh, form a PE, we need to give the PE several resources. There are PE number and uh, bus device function PDF range to make it sure what kind of devices it can include. And the MMIO, the memory mapping IO address, assigned to the E and DMA address, and the MSI address. Um, here is a general concept about PE. So the PE, uh, why we have PE on the power system? Because uh, the reason is that the PE is an Isolation unit. So when an error occurs, occurs, the system need to know which PE is in an error state. So we can do the recovery based on this PE number. So this is a, a feature on the power system. So we can uh, when something error happens that can be recovered to this particular PE. Do some recovery uh, to set some state to this, to this PE and uh, some recovery. And in order to uh, make this PE understand by the hardware, so uh, on the power IO architecture, we have several hardware tables to configure to be configured so that hardware can understand uh, which resources that uh, the purpose of this hardware table is to map the corresponding resources such as PDF range, MMIO range. DMA and MSI address to map to the PE number 
so that system can understand, okay, uh, this I.O. or this uh, transaction just happened by this PE and we do this recovery for this particular PE. <coughs> so the first table is called the uh, uh, PE LTM, which is PE lookup table max. So we can see the table, <coughs> uh, it's a brief one. It has, each PHB has a, a table with size 128, and each entry represents one PE, and uh, its corresponding BDF, the range this PE could have. And each PE has one and only one entry in the PE LTM, which means it's a one to one map. And when the error happens, the system could get a BDF number, and how do we we'll will do the scan from top to bottom. So the first one uh, match the BDF range, it will return this corresponding P number to the system. So okay, I got this, uh, this guy is in the wrong error state. Next one is called uh, uh, MBT, which could be 32 bit or 64 bit, the two tables to map to different range. This uh, is the MMI space alignment to make sure that uh, this MMIO is belongs to which PE. And uh, during the boot up stage, this table is, uh, the system will give a range of the MMIO space to the kernel and the kernel knows that and uh, do the calculation to divide this range equally. Uh, there are 128 uh, entries for this table and they divide uh, this range equally and uh, to map so that uh, when a range happens, it will, uh, this table, each entry of this table represents a piece of the uh, 128 range in this MMO. Uh, and the, in this table, uh, which is different from the previous one, that one PE could have several entries. Because in the previous table, every PE just gets one entry in this table. So this means if a PE, uh, this PE have a very large MMO space requirement, we can have several entries in this table. The next one is the uh, or the PVT, the PCE validation table. This table is used to do, uh, to validation the DMA address and uh, to do some the IOMMU map from the DMA address to the physical memory address. And uh, each, <coughs> each entry in this table represents a, a, a range of the DMA space uh, with the same size, but the minimum uh, size in power platform is 128 uh, megabytes. And also this, uh, in this table that PE could have several entries. <coughs> For example, this, this PE may require more than uh, this number of DMA resource. It could have several entries mapped in this table. And this table has a, a pointer to the IOM table to do the address map. Next one is for the MSI address, uh, called the MSI validation table. The, the this MVT creates the MSI alignment across existing PEs. So uh, when the MSI address uh, to do the, to write some data to the MSI address, the system can know uh, this address, this MSI address belongs to which PE. Well, we have so many hardware tables to help us to find uh, which uh, the error happens to which PE and do this, this kind of recovery. About this kind of uh, hardware tables on currently power platform really have some restrictions to, uh, to for the SRV card. The first one is the limited number of PEs. 
as we see that the ELTM just have 128 entries, which means the total number is 128. We cannot exceed that. Um, but this one uh, works in the previous uh, stage when the VF is not involved because we have plus P, we could have several PCI uh, devices or several buses included together. So it seems to have no big problem. And uh, when the VF is involved, since uh, as I mentioned before, on the power platform, when we want to assign a VF to some gas, we have to put this VF in a PE. This is the minimum assignable unit in power platform. So we have to put the VF in an individual PE. Otherwise, we cannot assign this VF to the gas. So current uh, idea is that we just leave the original design there and uh, and put this VFs into an individual PE so that we can put those VFs into the PE. And after, uh, even we can do this uh, assignment as the previous slide, but it will introduce some uh, problem because originally this is the original uh, ELTM table look like that we assign the P number from zero to uh, zero one and uh, going on. Uh, this works <coughs> because, uh, but if we just put the, those VFPEs behind those uh, bus PEs, it will not work because as I mentioned in the previous uh, VLTM slide, uh, the scan will begin from top to to bottom, and if a VF has some error happened, this BVF will be, of course, will be included in this parent uh, bus number. So when uh, the hardware scan this table, uh, even just a VF have a problem, the the bus P, uh, on the scan stage it will hit this parent first. So it will think, okay, uh, this whole bus get an error, and it will reset. The whole bus. This is what we want to uh, see. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And we just reorder the whole assignment. So uh, previously we assigned those PEs from, from zero, and then we uh, we reorder that we assign those PEs from the bottom. So uh, uh, during the scan, we will hit the that we have first. So this is uh, what we should change. And then is the MMIO alignment. Mm. As we as we know that uh, when uh, when we read a PCI device, there's uh, for the SRV device it will have some special the the VF bar. But the VF bar is a uh, continuous range and uh, the size of each si uh, the size of uh, uh, each VF the MMR range could have is not decided by the system and uh, uh, at this one <laughs> at the at the, at the uh, deep yellow there's this is the MMR alignment on uh, in the MDT table, we have we have uh, 256 entries in the system, and uh, at the boot time we divided uh, we divided the whole system MMR range equally, and uh, each entry in the MDT table represents uh, an exact range of the MMR range. If we just put a VF, okay, we can uh, we want to assign a VF. Uh, this range, this range, but uh, uh, how to explain? <coughs> uh, for example, uh, the second line, the VF bar size. We read from the PCI config space that uh, this is the VF bar size, uh, the size. But uh, each VF just occupy uh, not 
not exactly for the MMR alignment. So we need, uh, we cannot just assign a, a VF to an exact PE, just like in this at the bottom in the MDB table uh, for segment zero. We put, we say this is belongs to uh, VF P, uh, PE number for VF1 or PE number for VF2. And uh, in the second one, we say this is the this range belongs to uh, PE for VF2 or PE for VF3. This is a conflict. We cannot uh, uh, do that in current uh, uh, hardware. We have several options. <coughs> the first one option is that is for the VF stripe to shift the, the VF bar. Um, since uh, IBM have some contact with some particular hardware device manufacturer, some uh, we have met this kind of problem in previous the Power VM platform. So we asked the the manufacturer say, okay, we have this kind of issue and we need to provide with some special uh, capability in the PCI public space to so that uh, in, or, in original PCI device, the VF, when we read the VF bar size, it is continuous. But uh, when we set this uh, VF stride, the VF bar size is not continuous. We can give a shift to this VF bar. So VF, VF bar size is exactly shifted to meet the MMIO alignment. So we can just put that into the, to say that, okay, segment zero just belongs to the PE VF1 and segment one belongs to PE VF2. But this solution is, is not good because just only, for example, I know that Emulex Lancer card could support this kind of uh, uh, capability. Not all the cards could support this kind of thing. So it's not, uh, uh, so I, I don't think the, uh, after discussion, we think that this is not a very good solution for this kind of issue. And we have option two. Option two is to, is meant to uh, set the system page size to meet alignment. There is a, a field in the SRV card that called the system page size. When we set this field, uh, the VF bar size could, uh, should be the multiple integer of the system page size. This is what the specification says. So uh, the idea is to set this one to the, uh, the MMIO alignment so, so that VF, VF bar will expand to meet this alignment. So uh, the, uh, the con conclusion uh, the result is that so we can put each VF into this PE. But uh, unfortunately, uh, even the, the specification says that, but uh, not all the, I think uh, most of the devices or firmware do not support this kind of feature. So we cannot rely on this. Then we count out the, the, our choice currently. I think it's not good. If anybody has some good idea, can let me know. Thanks. <laughs> this is not good, but uh, may work. Our solution is that uh, in the MMI point of view, that P, uh, PF and VF are in one PE. So we just uh, have, uh, just like some bus PE, we put all those VFs and the PF, if the parents of PF, into one PE. So, um, because on the B, uh, BDF side, just like uh, like the bus PE, when it's scanned through the, uh, through the table, uh, first it will not conflict on the previous the uh, previous the, the scan, and then uh, the MMI window it really belongs to it's. Uh, It really belongs to at the same range, and uh, so we put those uh, when we have this segment one, a uh, segment zero and segment one. We say, okay, this 
this segment belongs to the to the bus PE and the, uh, to the to the bus uh, PCIE is uh, will expand to a bus and we say this segment MML segment belongs to this PE and when to do the recovery we will recover it, we will when the uh, some VF in the error state we will do the recovery for uh, to all those uh, VFs and PFs. But we know that uh, <coughs> it's, uh, it's not good because uh, when, the P, uh, when a VF has some uh, in an error state, it will recover all those uh, BF and VF. This will introduce some. Uh, so, when, suppose one guest is running something wrong in his gas, and all other guests have this, uh, uh, those VFs will see this kind of error. It's not good, but it uh, it will enable the VF. So uh, this is the, our solution. But if you have better idea, please let me know. Uh, your question is that something wrong happened in a in a VF, and it will and the VF in is in one of the gas, and uh, after we do the recover uh, recovery, this uh, will affect other gas. Yes, this is the disadvantage of this solution. Yes, other gas will see this error. It's, it's not good. Another one is the DMA space limitation. Uh, the first uh, um, restriction is that, as I said, the DVD table each entry represents a range of the DMA, and the, the minimum size is 200, uh, 128 megabytes. To some extent, it is big because for a VF, maybe they don't need to set, don't need the, uh, so, so big range. And uh, also due to the space limitation, not all entries are valid. This means even we have 256 entries in this table. So apparently we, we can have 258, uh, 56 uh, DMA uh, range for those PEs, but uh, on, on the platform currently I am doing the development, there are only uh, 128 multi, uh, multiply 4 megabytes is available for the DMA. So, which means uh, this is an example. Uh, on current platform, is there, there are 256 multiply 8, I think, uh, DMA range. So, on, for, in this example, there were only four entries are valid in the total system. So which means we just can't have four PEs to, to enable on the system. This is a limitation because uh, we cannot imagine that a uh, uh, SRV car just uh, have uh, one or two VF functions. This is not, uh, otherwise the customer will not buy this kind of car. It's not, uh, they have not, not uh, no great benefit from that. But this is the limitation <coughs> from our current platform. Uh, and uh, for example, we have uh, I listed those PEs. Um, since every PE will get a DMA range to make those devices to function, and for example, we just have four valid entries in this table. We have we could, so we could have PE zero, PE one and PE two, for example, for VF, and and it has three VFs, but we just could enable the first VF, VF zero, to give the P number three, but other VF, uh, other VFs, uh, could not be enabled. Even it can be assigned P number, but could not be enabled. So, 
So this solution is just like the previous one. We merge all those Vs in this PF to a big PE. But uh, this solution also like the, the previous one have the same uh, drawback from the previous one. If the v, one of the VF gets something wrong, other VFs will, uh, other guests have the uh, same VF in this PE will feel this kind of error. This is the drawback from the, the solution. Uh, it's up, uh, currently, we just enabled 32 bit DMA address uh, for, for the DMA. Um, on the power platform, it supports 60 bit DMA too, but we may have to uh, take a look on this and uh, we think this will have a big range for the DMA. So when, after we enable this one, we may have more uh, spaces for the PE. So we can uh, just, uh, we don't, uh, we can don't, uh, we cannot. So we can uh, revert our solution to the previous slide. We can assign uh, every PE an individual uh, DMA range. So could, we could have better uh, solution. But uh, uh, this also has some uh, problem because not every device supports a, a 64 bit uh, DMA address. So uh, we may, some, some device may work, some device may not work in the six, uh, 64 bit DMA. So this also uh, is under investigation now. Yeah, this is the slide for to show the disadvantage of this in uh, uh, in this picture. So for example, if uh, there are, in this picture, there are PF0, PF1, and uh, the PF1 have several VMs. All the VMs belong to the PE, PE, uh, PF1 plus PE. So all this, uh, the last uh, five, functions belong to one PE. The green means that uh, everything is fine. And for example, the VF2 gets uh, some error, it's in an error state set by the system. And all those and all those functions in belong to this bus PE will be in a recovery state. This will be seen by not only uh, the host and the guest. So this is a uh, is so not good, right? And this is another example that uh, uh, the difference is that PF0 and PF1 are uh, belongs to the same bus PE. For example, uh, we have several physical, physical functions for our PCI part. This, this same that VF2 gets some error, and the whole, uh, the total, uh, the, all those functions in this. But PE will be in a recovery state. 